Hello guys and welcome again to another NCLEX question review. In our question today, the nurse is preparing to care for a client with a potassium deficit. The nurse reviews the client's record and determines that the client is at risk for developing a potassium deficit because of which situation? Option A, a sustained tissue damage. Option B, requires nasogastric suction. Option C, has a history of Addison's disease. Option D, uric acid levels of 9.4 milligrams per deciliter. Remember that potassium is one of the seven essential macrominerals, and the human body requires at least 100 milligrams of potassium every day to support key processes. Homeostatic mechanisms maintain potassium concentration between 3.5 and 5.1 milligrams per deciliter. When potassium levels drop below 3.5, we call it hypokalemia. If potassium levels rise over 5.1, it's considered to be high and we call it hyperkalemia. In a healthy individual, the entire daily intake of potassium is eliminated, approximately 90% through the kidneys in urine and 10% in the stool. The kidneys play a dominant role in potassium regulation. More than 98% of total body potassium is located inside the cells, so it's intracellular, mostly found in muscle. Hypokalemia can be caused by one or more of the following ways. Number one, a decrease in intake, as in a low potassium diet. Number two, transfer into the cell, which occurs when potassium shifts from the bloodstream to the inside of cells. Number three, excessive elimination which can be caused mostly by a loss of potassium-rich fluids through the digestive tract and loss of potassium through the kidneys. Hyperkalemia, however, may appear as a result of one or more of three different mechanisms. Number one, extracellular transfer, which happens when potassium moves from the inside of cells into the bloodstream. Number two, excessive intake, such as accidental ingestion of potassium salts or potassium medications. Number three, ineffective elimination. Remember that 98% of potassium concentration is located inside of cells. Any situation that causes increased tissue or cellular breakdown, such as rhabdomyolysis, burns, or any cause of rapid tissue necrosis, including tumor lysis syndrome, can cause the release of intracellular potassium into the blood, causing hyperkalemia. Acidosis is a process causing increased acidity in the blood and other body tissues. It is a cause of hyperkalemia because an increase in hydrogen ions in the cells can displace potassium out of the cells, causing a rise of serum potassium levels. Aldosterone is a hormone that plays a central role in homeostatic regulation of blood pressure, plasma sodium, and potassium levels. It influences the excretion of potassium and absorption of sodium from the kidneys into the bloodstream, thereby indirectly influencing water retention, blood pressure, and blood volume. In Addison's disease, the adrenal glands produce too little aldosterone. In the absence of aldosterone, the kidneys will increase reabsorption of potassium, leading to increased serum potassium, or hyperkalemia, and sodium will be eliminated through urine causing hyponatremia. Note that the subject of the question is potassium deficit. Recall the normal uric acid levels and the causes of hypokalemia to assist in eliminating option D. For the remaining options, note that the correct option is the only one that identifies a loss of body fluid. In this case, the client would be at risk for developing a potassium deficit or hypokalemia because potassium-rich gastrointestinal fluids are lost through gastrointestinal suction, placing the client at risk for hypokalemia. This makes option B the correct answer. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more NCLEX question reviews. That's it for now, on to the next question.